how's Mr. Worcester doing? We were there when he was released from jail. It's been a long 24 hours. How's he doing today? Right. Uh, he, he seems to be fine. Uh, yesterday, uh, after he was released from jail, uh, he, he was reunited with some of his family. Uh, he, again, he seemed to be in good spirits. He's pretty hungry. Still obviously banged up, you know, as, as you know, we can all, uh, it, it was obvious to all of us, uh, but he did seem to be in good spirits yesterday and today. Um, and you hit on it yesterday, but w w there's initial reports from Alma. He is facing criminal charges. I don't want to make light of that. Right. But your thoughts on that, and, and I, I mentioned it yesterday, but we didn't have much time to address it. He is still facing criminal charges out of Crawford County for the initial incident and what followed. But you were te you hit on it. You still didn't believe the response was definitely worthy of the allegations that he's facing. Right, right. And again, you know, we obviously have to let that process, you know, run its course. There's been very little actually uh, released from the local prosecutor's office. Uh, obviously, the sheriff did a uh, conference yesterday. But you know, we know just a little more than you guys know. Hopefully, in the coming days, they will release some more information to us. That's what we hope. Um, but again, we just want the process to kind of run its course as far as the alleged criminal uh, allegations. Now then, to today, you guys represent two clients you're about to introduce us to. Sure. Uh, tell us about the two clients that we're about to meet. Well, let me tell you first about Mr. Wallace. And um, approximately a month ago, I've known Mr. Wallace for years, but he told me about an incident during an arrest. Um, we felt like it was an unlawful arrest, but he was essentially attacked at that arrest. Um, what he told me concerned me greatly. Um, 15 years practicing in this county, we have some really good law enforcement. We don't have excessive force cases, and what he had told me concerned me so much. Um, that day, even though I was on vacation, I started the process by notifying the superiors about what I believed had transpired the evening prior over what I deemed, you know, excessive force. Essentially, Mr. Wallace, in my opinion, was brutally beaten. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, felt like I, through the proper channels, made a detailed account of what was alleged. Um, and what I felt like should happen after that. I then sent, you know, email confirmation through a freedom of information request detailing all the information I wanted and stated that when I was back next week, um, you know, we could be available for immediate interview. And my last contact, I believe, with any superior was July 14th. And to date, I have not been taken up on any investigation of that. Once I received the Freedom of Information request documents, that's when I learned that um, while there were a few officers there, the main officer um, that um, was essentially brut brutally beating Mr. Wallace's head was Deputy Levi White. Mm -hmm. Who was the same one of two deputies involved in the incident with your client two days ago. That's yes. Um. And what I had never seen a picture of Mr. White but on Sunday, I was sitting there and I, like everyone else, was getting the video of that brutal beating that occurred in Mulberry. And when I saw that video, it was exactly how Mr. Wallace mm -hmm. had told me he was getting beat. The blows to the portion, the side and the back of the head, the grabbing the head and hitting it on the concrete, I, I knew. It was just, I knew, because that is not, you know, it's very specific. and. I got with Mr. Wallace and that's when he confirmed with me that that was the same. I, I knew it in my heart it was, but that um, Levi White was the same officer with both individuals. Now, what can you tell us? I, I tried to look, I didn't see court records on any, any of these two people filed yet. What can you tell us before with your attorneys uh, how this all transpired briefly? Well, Mr. Wallace, they um, have reviewed it and it is my hope they are not filing charges on it. He, it's been five plus weeks and that no charges have been filed, even though he was booked in and arrested that night, then it gets reviewed. So mm -hmm. I do not believe charges should be filed. I don't think he was guilty of anything. And my hope is even though we're making this public, that is still how that stays. This would be past the normal timeline now for charges to even get lodged. And mm -hmm. so 
I would be very disappointed if charges at this point now would get lodged against Mr. Wallace. Do you think five, it's been five weeks and still no charges? It would have been the evening of September 12th and to date. Um, I've never heard of that someone being arrested. What was he arrested for? He was booked in under very similar charges that Randall was also booked in under. Right, and, and I think the biggest difference is, unfortunately, for his case, nobody was there, you know, with a cell phone videotaping that. Had that been the case, you guys would have probably been down here uh, interviewing him immediately. But, of course, it was not. Although, when you see his injuries, uh, the photos that, that were taken, very similar to what, uh, what Randall went through. So, it's very unfortunate. By the same deputy involved in this incident? One of the same deputies, yes. And tell us about your other client. And, you know, she's probably going to tell you all a little bit about her story. But last Sunday, you know, essentially nine days ago, she was, in my opinion, attacked by Deputy Levi White, also on her property. Um, part of that is on video until, you know, her, her phone slams to the ground. But you can hear her screaming. You can hear her in pain. And it is the exact same deputy that was in that video from this Sunday. We haven't talked to them yet, but that's shocking allegations, is it not? The same deputy, three separate incidents? Um, in a month. In a month. What do you want people who see and hear their stories, what do you want people to know? What do you want people in Crawford County to know? You live here. I'm not sure where you live. Yeah. That you've served the county, and you've served this region for right, many years. Right. I'm from Fort Smith, so I'm just right next to Yes. Door. Right. What do you want people to know about this before we hear from your clients? Well, as far as what I want, what I want is accountability. So if, if we've got all of our local law enforcement and this sort of thing keeps coming up and there's a lack of dash cams, and there's a lack of body cams and nobody knows and then it gets swept under the rug, uh, where's the accountability? So thankfully, some of this is coming to light and we really hope that uh, some changes get made locally. Yeah. Like I had said, 15 years doing this in this county, I've never made any allegations of excessive force. It's not indicative of the law enforcement in this area, and I just wish that my complaint on July 13th would have been treated seriously and investigated as requested because I don't think we would have the Randalls and the Tammies mm -hmm. since then and whoever else. Um, you know, we've been contacted now by a scary amount of people, Several. pictures, um, and it's the same, you know, Deputy Levi White. Uh, you know what could solve this? I always say, since I'm a television person, body camera footage and stuff could go. But there's, the, you heard the sheriff say yesterday, he might not have known about any of this had it not been for this person recording this. Mm -hmm. um, safe to say, you guys agree with this department, if there ever was a case for body cameras and dash cameras, is this not it? This is definitely it. And, and again, while you know this is not truly indicative of all law enforcement in the area, this is not just isolated to this area. This happens all over the place. It's just, just now kind of blowing up here. But it's something that really needs to take a sweeping effect across the board as far as the accountability goes and our interactions with law enforcement. Indeed. May we talk to your clients now? Sure. Thank you, guys. Oh, I do have another uh, quick question. Uh, I know that you're you know, mostly focusing on Deputy Levi White, mm -hmm. but um, the other officer from Mulberry and then the other Crawford County deputy, were you able to find out any more in your research into what happened with with Randall in your search, were you able to find out anything about them and their background? We've, we've filed for your request and we are still awaiting some of that information. So I think in the coming days, hopefully we have a lot more information on that. And there's other officers involved with Mr. Wallace too. I mean, he was tased four times. Mm -hmm. He was brutally beaten with a baton. The bruises are, in my opinion, pretty horrific. So it, you know, there's something going on and we just need to get it addressed. The Sheriff's Department has the largest budget in the county. There's rooms for in-camera cars, there's, you know, in the budget and body cameras and that really needs to be looked into when the new Sheriff, you know, he takes office on January 1. Thank you so much. Oh. I, I, um, Teddy may just, if, you know, sit here. I don't know if there's a specific question I could talk to him, but sure. very shy and I'll have a seat, but, uh, he, no, uh, you don't have to say. You guys got to scoot close here, though, please, so we can hear you. Um, before before I forget, uh, tell me your name, sir, and how you spell it. Teddy. 
T E D D Y. Uh -huh. Wallace, W A L L A C E. And you live here in Crawford County, Van Buren, Alma, or something? Rudy. Rudy. And who are you? My name is Tammy Nelson. It's T A M M Y N E L S O N. And I also live in Rudy. In Rudy. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I'll start with you, sir. This happened, what, about a month ago, right? Close. What happened? I mean, just, just tell us. When uh, uh, you were beaten, you say, being arrested? Yes. I can't imagine that, but firsthand, walk us through that. What was that like? Uh, pretty uh, horrifying. I always have a. Uh, I respect the officers, but that was uncalled for what they done to me that night. So what did they do to you that night? Uh, just beat me. I was. I mean, I don't know. They just beat me. Did you see that video we did a story on yesterday and the day before? I did. That's how my incident looked like. Did it look similar to that? Yes. How so? Were they on top of you? Only difference was, was I was being tased and beaten with a baton while being beat in the head. They used a stun gun on you repeatedly? Well, I remember at least four times. Oftentimes police say, well, people are resisting. Uh, you, I would resist too. If you're getting tased, you tense up. I mean, it Ask happens. How many times, he was getting hit in the head. How many times were, were you hit in the head? Too many to count. How were you? And then were you taken to jail? Uh, I was actually drug out of my yard. Then taken, thrown him back of the car, then took him to jail. Did you have to go to the hospital for your injuries? They, uh... No, yes, no? Okay. I didn't have to go. They probably could have, it sounds like. EMS was called because of his condition and met at the jail. Oh, they checked you, EMS checked you out? Uh, the... Uh, and the officer made the decision to not send him to the hospital. Uh, what were some of your injuries? Uh, I had a bunch of uh, abrasions all over my elbows, my knees, my legs were bruised. I have a big bruise on my right arm. It just actually just now got all healed up from it all. What do you want that? Uh, I had my head was split open. In how many spots? It's too many to count. I mean, at least ten. At least ten. That's all I could count. I mean, my head was sore for for a while. And when you saw that video. The same deputy who's on top of that guy hitting him in the head, that's the same one who was hitting you? Yes. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, what do you want that deputy to know? I'm not going to answer that. I, I want to ask, I mean, that happened to you and to see that you didn't have cameras in your instance, to see it happen again. Yeah. It was, I'm just glad he, it's here. We're doing something about it. Were you shocked? Were you shocked that this was the response? This, yes. Shouldn't have ever come this far, but we're here. I mean, why do you think your case didn't, I mean, go, go as far. Why do you think it was kind of dropped the way it was? I mean, there's no video of anything happening. All I got is just pictures. That's all I have. You have pictures that show your injuries afterwards? Yes, you do? Yep. Okay. Uh, Tammy, right? Yes, sir. Tammy Nelson. What happened to you? Not long ago, uh, a week ago last Sunday, right? Yes. What, uh, what happened? That Sunday morning, um, a deputy, which Levi White, was called out on a civil matter. And uh, he had knocked on my door and asked me to come out. I always take my phone with me. It's for my own protection. And... Uh, like I said, over the civil matter, but I have a video and during of a conversation, he come at me, grabbed me by my right arm, did not tell me I was under arrest. And when he did, he yanked, this arm has to have surgery, I have problems with it. He swings me around, comes around, well, when he swings me, he grabs my phone and throws it to the ground. But right before that, I'm looking at him and it's, he's angry. He's not wanting to do what prior officers have done to confirm the situation, just put it like that. And uh, he's standing there, just looking at me in this mean, I can tell by his demeanor that he's getting angry. And then within a few minutes, he come from his car around into my yard, grabbed me by my right arm, 
reached over, grabbed my phone, threw it to the ground. So when my phone went down face first, the audio stayed on. So within the split second, you see Levi White grab me, yank me into him. He swings around after he throws my phone. He throws his arm around my neck. His fist hits me in my jaw right here. Lifts me up off the ground from my feet. Drops me down, spins me around again, knees me into my side, which knocks me back. When I go back, I'm trying to catch myself. I come down on my elbows, onto my back. I'm still in my morning gown. And I'll just say, with nothing underneath, we don't sleep. Sorry to say it, but that's just, you know. My gown comes up and it's above my waist. And I am trying to get my gown out because I am on the ground half naked. He comes down on top of me with his knee again, flips, steps up, flips me back over onto my I'm screaming for him to stop. He is breaking my wrist. I had just had tubes taken out of my nose. I had just had surgery. The 29th, the tubes were removed. Uh, he's trying to, he's got me by the back and he's trying to push me. You can literally hear the voice of my face into the ground. He's trying to smash my face into the ground. I, with my left hand, I am holding myself to trying to get turned because I'm not supposed to hit none of this. And I'm screaming for him to stop. And he's telling me to put my hand behind my back, my right hand. In the meantime, he is continuing to twist my arm. Finally, I give and put my arm back to where he'd get up so he would get up because he came down on my back with his knee. Um, he tells me to get up, which I can't, and he grabs in between the, just the cuffs and some, yanks me up to my feet. And I'm asking repeatedly, what am I being arrested for? What am I being arrested for? Which you can clearly hear everything in the video because it stayed on. All the way to the car, I'm silly asking this question. He opens the car door, I get into the back seat. I'm still asking the question. He refuses to answer. And then he says, you have the right to remain silent. That was it. He told me to put my feet in, shuts the door, rolls the windows up, no AC, pulls, and that's that. And I'm sitting there. And I get taken to jail, and I am booked on obstruction of government operation and uh, harassment. Obstructing the office, the deputy, no. his duty? No, due yeah. to the civil matter. We'll just leave it at that. Fred asked her if she reported it. Did, uh, what do you, uh, yes, I did. I reported that following. I was held. Oh, you reported to the sheriff's department? The next morning. I was held down there for four to five hours before I was even booked in. My family's calling and everything. My sister calls. The question is, what has she been arrested for? They tell her on the phone she is not arrested. She has just been held in our facility. Okay. And then eventually, four or five hours later, they come in, get me. They book me. 20 minutes, I'm out. I, the following morning, I get up, I go down, which Deputy Levi White had also taken my phone and put it into evidence. For a reason, I don't know why. When I told Sheriff Jimmy Damani what happened, he knew nothing about the incident. I brought it to his attention. When I did, and I'm sorry to say, but the first words from his mouth, you were resisting. And I said, no, I was. He said, yes, you was. And I said, did your dash cam show that? Well, we didn't have one. Did your body cam? Didn't have that. I said, no, but I do. You have that, that, can you play that video for us? Yes, I can. My I phone's running low, but You it, might have to <laughs> send it to us as well, but I'm just, just so I know, so, so we have an idea of what you're talking about. We might ask you to play it a couple times so we can zoom in, if you can hold it up or something. Is, mm -hmm. is that something that we can? My phone is on 3%. I mean, we could try it. I don't know how long it's going to hold up. It's, so. let's, let's try it. And everybody maybe can zoom in or something. Let's, and if it does, I know we'll ask you to send it to us. Before you do that, it's video you took. We have permission to use it on air and online. Yes, you do. It, you own the rights to it. Mm -hmm. And there's pictures, too, as well. Okay. Hopefully it'll hold up. But if not, we'll get a charger. But go ahead and see how far we get.
Start to hear anything else. Bobby, will you put that for me so the animals won't go in? I think. Alright, you'll have to, at that moment, it's because we're moving further from the video. Can we not hear anything else? He done shot me into the oh, car. That's uh, good. I just want to ask, I mean, as a woman, to be there halfway undressed and a man to do that to you, how does that make you feel? Humiliated. Disrespected. Violated. I'm on my back. There's nothing covering me. He's right here on top of me. It was. It's obviously affected you, hasn't it? And when you hear that, you like you're reliving it again? Every time. At the moment when he threw his arm around, and that's when you can literally, like, he cuts my air for a second because he had picked me up on my feet, and that's when you hear me make that gasp. Because it was like, it happened so, I mean, I didn't expect that. He's walking towards me. I'm thinking he's coming to whatever we're gonna come. And it, nothing, not a word. Just grabbed me. And this arm, I can't even straighten it all the way out. And I have to get surgery done on here. And like I said, I just had surgery on my face, my nose. All this is just repaired. And Dr. Highfield is my doctor. Well, the, I'm sorry. You say surgery on your nose. What, what do you have? Um, when I was younger, I was um, struck in the face right here, which. Did so like this. reconstructive surgery or something? No, it, no, it was due to like sinuses. It had built from a car wreck and being hit, and over time it collapsed in so bad that they had no choice but to go in and repair it. But after all that, all we just heard, to have the sheriff tell you that you were resisting. Yes, Demoni and them. I know they've done seen the video because they refused to give my phone back unless that's what they got. So I was more glad to give it to him because it was mine and I had nothing to hide. And the point is, I don't, if a person's going to resist, why would you video it? Why would you have a video going and then want to resist? He grabbed me so fast that there was no time, even if I wanted to resist. Explain the civil, just say that it was a it was a call over an easement issue. This was not oh, a criminal call. Oh, so yeah, I was going to ask that. Yeah, when you say a civil issue, would you <laughs> tell us more information Briefly. about that? It's just, it's, I can just put it like this. It's been going on for about eight months, and and uh, I have dealt with officers probably, I uh, probably know them all by name by now personally, and uh, we won't go into that as well. Um, but. Um, it's been an ongoing situation, and at the time I figured, I thought it was worked out, and, but it seemed like every time an officer come, I was constantly having to repeat myself, but they would do, make contact down to the Sheriff's Department, just confirming the situation, and they would leave. And what, and what do you say, I mean, what is it, dispute with the neighbor over property or something, or dogs on their property or something? No, it's there? to do with um, the neighbor on the hill. We'll just put it Can I property? ask, have you? Um, had any encounters with W.Y. before? That is the first time I ever met him. I have met a lot due to this issue. And he is the first one that I have met ever. And that is the first time that I have ever been violated and assaulted and my constitution rights taken from me. It's just... He doesn't deserve a wear a punch. 
Were you ever charged uh, what, harassment or something or obstruction? Where that did... day by him. But at the time, from all the other incidents with the cops coming out, the, the vehicle in the same place where it was before, and uh, no, never. Are you still facing those charges? Is she still facing those charges? Yes. Obstruction and harassment? Yes, obstructing governmental operations. Which deals from that arrest, if I'm correct, right? My understanding, I think it's because he asked her to move the truck and she didn't. And what harassment? Is that for the officer? We haven't got the report yet uh -huh. she, since it's so new, so we're waiting on that. Okay. And yes, yeah, so in the following morning, I did go to the sheriff and speak with uh, Jimmy Damani, and he did. He he knows all about it. Me and Jim Damani has had several conversations in his office with us about that, and, and he knew a lot. I want to ask you. So you went to the department, um, and just to see that he's still, you know, out here on the force. How, how do you feel about that? And what did you say about him having a badge? I'm very upset that nothing was not handled over the situation with Levi White. Um, that following Monday, this following past Monday, I was going to go and do what I had to do and talk to a uh, prosecuting attorney, try to get in there, but they're either out to lunch or never available. Um, but Sunday, I was at home cleaning in my yard and my sister, I get a phone call from my sister and she asked me, sis, have you seen Facebook? I said, no, what is something going on and she said there was some Crawford County officers were beating this gentleman and she said from what happened to you what you told us tell us if this is the same guy and just like Harry said before I even seen the video I just felt that that is who it was I just knew that it was Levi White and I said send me the video or that and soon as she sent it and I'm still on the phone with her. And when it opens up, I see Levi White punching that kid and punching him. And I was furious, devastated, and angry. Because if it was handled from last Sunday, we wouldn't be sitting here right now having to fight and defend this child that he just hurt.